Hi everyone, today I wanted to make a quick little project that I thought would be fun and it's not a card. How about that? So these are cute little uh, wall decor and you, I thought it'd be nice to have in my um, craft room. So just really cute little hexagons and I was shown these little hexagons by another Stampin' Up! friend, Pam. Thanks Pam. And so I thought I would show a couple different ways that you can use them. So, and I want to show you that I didn't actually glue anything down because I can change them out, which I thought was fun. Okay, so these little guys were from Michael's and they were 99 cents. So they're cute, right? They're a little bit smaller than my hand, so not too big. And I thought they would be cute in my craft room, like I said, but they'd also be cute in your kids' room. Um, you can put different things on them, like I spelled out the word create, but you can spell out the word laundry and put it in your laundry room, <laughs> or you can spell out um, your kids' names or things like that. So it's a cute little, cute little project. Now these come natural, so they're not painted, and I thought I'd play around with, I like to um, think about ways to use it using only Stampin' Up! products because I like to think, well maybe, maybe I would want to use it in a class or maybe I'd want to use it um, in a video such as this. So um, how can I make it a different color? And you can leave it natural. It looks nice natural. And here I can just put that in and you can leave it just as is. But if you wanted to kind of give it a whitewash, here is what I did. Um, I have this little tray that, um, I don't know what it had on there, watermelon, some kind of melons, I don't know, <laughs> maybe it was some cut vegetables of some kind, and um, it's a little, just a little tray that I keep a few of these, and, um, I, or you can use your silicone mat, I can't find mine, I have like five, but I think I brought them to um, the place where I hold my classes, and I left them there, so I'm, I, and then I forget, to, I try to remind myself to um, bring one home when I'm there next and I always forget so hopefully stamp camp I will remember this time um, I'll hold this one upside down so these are craft white refill bottles from Stampin Up now when you buy craft white from Stampin Up you get an uninked let me grab it an uninked pad and then a refill and then you can ink up your pad and I've done so but I'm gonna use quite a bit so I thought rather than use my pad I'll just take the refill bottle and put some in my tray. Now you can use, um, like I said, right from here. I just figured I would try it. I knew this one was getting empty. You can also buy just the refill instead. You don't have to buy a new pad every time. There, let's finish this one off. Okay. And then I'm just taking a sponge and um, just getting it kind of inked up. And I'm just kind of staining it. Now you do have to let it dry, but the one I did, and it's not super white, you know, this is, um, I mean, you could do another layer if you want it super white. So I'm kind of giving it a stained look. And how easy is that? You don't have to get a paintbrush. If you're a Stampin' Up! person, you've got these sponges laying around. You could use a sponge dauber if you don't care about going inside the corners, you know, with the plastic handle, but this kind of cut up sponge works better. I wanted to use the re-inker because I thought um, I'd be using a lot of ink and then I'd have to re-ink the, re the pad anyway, so might as well just use the refill bottle. So I'm just going like this, giving it a nice little inked finish. Set it down and do the top again. All right, so I've got this kind of whitewashed wood look. And again, you can go crazy and make it super white. You could stain it with other ink colors. I wanted it white, so I thought the craft ink would be nice, but I wonder what would look like if you used. Um, you know, a color and you know, let's do the back. <laughs> I like to see what happens. So you're going to see this one in real time, I guess. Um, I'm just going to grab 
and ink from my tray here. And I just want to see what will happen. That's going to get covered anyway. So I just want to see what would happen if you inked up. So you can kind of make these any color you want. Real simple. Um, but I wanted white. And then as far as decorations go, the ideas are endless. And um, I liked this paper that's retiring. And I love the kind of whitewashed wood and gray. So I'm going to do this. This is retiring, like I said, and I only have a little bit left. So I thought I would use it. And it's called Heart and Home. And it's just every page has this kind of whitewashed wood background planks. And then the fronts have patterns, and it's real pretty. So how I got the um, size is I traced the hexagon, and then I went in a little bit from that line. I did this on a piece of scratch paper, my grid paper here, until I got the desired shape, and I just kind of placed it in there until I saw that it was good. Let me put that aside to dry. And then I just kind of turned my paper over and traced it with a pencil. Okay, I want to make sure the lines are dark enough where I can see them because I'm going to try and cut them with my paper trimmer just so that I get a nice straight line. So I'll do the top one first. I'm gonna inside here look for that pencil line in the track. Go ahead and cut. And then here I'm just gonna do that again. I'm gonna look for the pencil line in the track. throw it in here to see how good we did. All right, so it's sometimes when you're penciling, you know, you kind of are slightly outside the lines, and so it's a little bit on the large side. So let me just trim a tiny skosh off of that. So when you're cutting, maybe go to the inside oops, of your pencil line. When you're going so close, it's easy to do that. Let me clean that up. I wanted to clean that with my guillotine cutter, which I also left at the place I do my class. <laughs> So I cleaned it up a little bit on my big guillotine cutter. It's so nice that I, I use a church in in ta next town over. They let me do my classes there, which is, and they let me leave stuff in a cabinet. So I leave a lot of things, extra big shot, just so I don't have to carry things back and forth, but then I leave too many things. All right, so here's my little um, shape. And now I'm gonna just look for accents. So I was using, let me show you the stamp sets I used. I'm using Honey Bee Home, and I am going to use this flower right here. I don't know what this flower is. I want to say it's a hollyhock, but I don't think that's right. If you know what that is, let me know. So I'm going to stamp that in basic gray. I'm kind of going with the colors in my designer series paper. And I'm 
just going to use a scrap of basic white. See what I have laying around in my scrap bag. making a little thing but it's crooked <laughs> all right so let's see if that'll fit there yes it will all right and then I'm gonna color this in and the colors I'm using here are um, daffodil delight and I'm gonna use a little bit of green um, this green in the paper here that I used is garden green, but I'm going to go slightly lighter um, on my flower here and do an old olive. And I'm using Stampin' Blends. Those were mango. <laughs> so many yellows. I need to um, put little initials on the ends. Okay, so I'm going to use the smaller end and just give it a little color. I'll fast forward this part. So I stamped in a not, I usually a lot of people say use memento ink to stamp when you're coloring with blends. I wanted something lighter and I went with the gray and you can still color over it. You just have to be careful. You don't want to blend like normally you can kind of really dig in there and blend. But when you're using um, a regular ink pad, you want to be careful and not over blend like I'm not going to go down I'm trying to avoid the dark gray in the center here I want to be down there but I don't want to go too close so I'm kind of avoiding being right over the deepest of the grays and then in the center where it's very dark gray here rather than smear I'm kind of dabbing and going towards the dark gray just because I don't want to accidentally whoops, pull any of that dark color out if it's fully dry maybe heat set it you might not have as much problem but I like the slightly lighter than black outline, although this dark gray is pretty dark. <laughs> so I went with a light. Now I'm doing some darks in the centers of the flowers. And that is it. I might add a little bit of dark green. Now this has a die, so I'll go ahead and cut that out. I'm going to use my mini. So let me trim that down. Now I had a stamp camp not too long ago where we used similar um, colors and pieces. So I have some leftover die cuts from the same die set and I'm just gonna use them since I already have them. And they're um, Fresh Freesia is one of the colors. And Garden Green. See, should I add this white one too? Might as well, I have it, right? You can use them all. And um, I'm also using these cute little doilies. 
and I just cut, cut one in half. And then for the cute little strip of paper here, that's from the same one, it's actually the back side. Is that long enough? Maybe I'll use this and cut. I like to use up my scraps. So is that long enough? Yeah, we'll use this one. And just gonna cut myself just need to figure, figure out what I'm going to do with the end. Maybe that end will go down here since I need an angle. So I'm holding it up against my hexagon here. Trying to see which way will go further. This is going to go underneath and then we're going to layer. So here's how I layered. I wanted there to be some depth because it's kind of like a shadow box so it's got some layering to it. So what I did first is I put these background pieces down and how I did that is I just grabbed my adhesive, um, where is it? And I went across like this and I know this is going to get covered up so I'm not super worried about that. Alright, so let's see, I'm going to put the white in the background. You can barely see it. Woo. Let's get that fresh freesia going. And I want to make sure that's showing. This is just going to be a little barely there piece. I'll use up these greens. Now they can't go past there because of that shadow box line. I can rip that down a little bit. And then maybe this one will come out. Now this one I'm going to hold on to. I'm going to put that one a little higher up. I'm not going to even hold on to that little ripped off piece. Okay, so then I'm going to put my doily down. Like so. And that's going to kind of hold it all down. Next I'm going to do this one and I want to flag the end. So I like to just kind of cut a little slit up the middle and meet it. Okay, and I'm going to put this one up a little bit, so I'm going to use dimensionals behind it. use my other greenery. So let's put a little bit of adhesive. And I don't know if I need that. Let's see. Okay. I think I don't need that green. All right, now I wanted there to be uh, some more dimension. More and more dimension is better, right? So again, I'm going to go, and I need to make sure that it touches instead of being back there. That one is two layers deep. So if you wanted to add some adhesive behind here, you would have to go two layers deep. So I'm going to do one, two, but this one's only going to sit on it's going to sit on this one that's already up a layer, so it only needs to be one layer deep. I'm hoping that makes sense to you. So we've got that. So now it's nice and stable. Okay, and then for a little more, I wanted to add, I have this, um, some gold, and I just tied, just for some gold, just for some shimmer, I just tied a bow. A lot of times you can do like a loop-de-loopy -loop thing and not even worry about it being a bow, but this is so much easier for me, is to just tie a bow. And 
and this is really old um, ribbon from maybe last catalog or two, but there's some newer one just like this. So I, this is the older version if you're wondering why it's on that spool and not on the current spool. And that just gets glue dot. And you can decide if you want that bow behind or in front. I kind of wanted it behind, so I just lifted it up and tucked it behind because all I wanted was a little bit of shimmer back there. And poke it. There we go. Now, as far as your sentiment goes, you can do anything you want. This could be, you know, something you make up on your computer. If you're going to put this in, um, you know, a room of your house, you want to have something that's not, you know, happy birthday, right? So um, you can do anything you want. And I found this one, friendship is a thing of beauty. And I like that because it's just a daily reminder to cherish our friends. And so I found that, and you can go through all your stamp sets, kind of look through them and see what you have. I think that's kind of fun to look through my stamp sets and see what I have. And I found this one, our friendship is a thing of beauty, but I just didn't ink up the R. So it's just friendship is a thing of beauty. And that was real simple to do. Let me show you that. Now again, I'm using a scrap. So I just kind of reached in my bag and I grabbed, this is my white scrap bag. <laughs> Isn't it huge? <laughs> okay, I grabbed a scrap. And I grabbed my basic gray. And so it's real easy on a stamp like this to avoid a certain word because I'm just going to hang it off, make sure it doesn't touch the word R. So I'm going to go like that. But you have to make sure you got that F. Now that's a tricky thing. You can see I am worried. If you're worried about it, another way to do it, I think I got the F, but just another way to do it so you can see is grab some washi tape or masking tape or a post-it note and you can cover what you don't want like that and then then you can not worry so much you can make sure you got that F and then peel this off and then stamp it my head's gonna come down here sorry about that so now I've got friendship is a thing of beauty like so Now for the ends, I just snip the ends, or if you have this little guy, this is nice. This is the um, pick-a-punch and you can stick it right in there. When I'm doing both ends though, I have a hard time getting it centered how or spaced as far apart as I want. I wish this was clear. <laughs> that would be fun. Alright, so I'm just going to try it though. Sometimes I have too much on this side. Yeah, like this side has more white than that side. So you can do it twice. You can come in and take a little hair off. There we go. Okay, and again, I have this one up on dimensionals, but I'm going to bridge over this. So now I'm going to put like this. I'm going to do one on either side. That makes sense. I hope it does. And then I'll show you the other ideas I came up with. I'm thinking about maybe doing this in the winter in a class. And um, with the snowman, there's a the new winter catalog just came out for demonstrators. We are already able to purchase from it, and of course, there's a really cute snowman set. And I thought, do I want to center on there or lower? I don't know. Okay, I thought maybe this would be a cute window shadow box with the snowman set. I don't know. I didn't buy it yet. I bought a lot of stuff, but I focused mostly on the fall. And so I didn't get the snowman yet. I will. It's adorable. Okay, now I used a B on this one, and I since checked. I made sure that this paper and these are things are still available. Now, the stamp set is carrying over into the new catalog, so you don't have to worry about that. that. And we still have gold twine. But this little B is already sold out. 
it's that time of year where the spring catalog is disc is ending at the end of June. So right now everything in it is in wild supplies last. And unfortunately, I think these bees are gone. Maybe they're just on back order. I couldn't, I didn't see them. I could have just missed them. But just in case, I thought, you know, you can always take one of these bees and emboss it in gold and have a cute little gold bee or in that paper that I showed you with the wood background, which is on my desk somewhere. Here it is. There is a paper that has little honeybees. And there it is. We used them in a card at Stamp Camp a couple Stamp Camps ago. And they were cute and I think I had some extra ones laying around. Where did I put them? I had them out a few minutes ago just for this purpose. And you can add one of the bees. Like you can add this big guy here. You can add this little guy here. So you don't have to use the gold one if you don't have a gold one. And to make this one shimmer a little bit, I used a Wink of Stella pen and just colored his wings. So now his wings have a cute little shimmer to them. And that way it kind of has a little bit of shine. Which I like because I've got some shine in my ribbon and just a little little perk of shine right there and I think I'll put him up on a dimensional as well okay so these little hexagons like I said they're from Michaels and my other it's dry now so I can pop it in like so and I didn't glue it down because oops pop it in there we go I didn't glue it down because I thought you know what I can change this up Here's my other one, and you can keep adding to them. Let me show you another version. Okay, let me put that like this. Here's another version, and here I used a new product um, called Best Butterflies, and it's all the paper. I cut this out of the same paper pack, so it's a really cute paper pack. It's a six by six pack, and you can kind of mix and match. So I just kind of looked at the backgrounds, and I saw this one. I liked that one, and then the little so coral, there's little daisies, there's little, there's fresh freesia, navy, you can pick the color combination you like, right? And then I just cut a butterfly right out of the paper. There are dies. There's a whole stamp set, everything. All I used for this was the paper, though. Um, the dies are really cute. The stamp set's really cute. I have those. I'll use them on other projects. But this one is all about the paper. And then the Create is a brand new alphabet stamp set. Let me grab it. Here it is. This is called Alpha Best. Really cute. They're small letters, so you can use them in the past. Sometimes we've had larger ones. I like that we have a variety of letters throughout the years, and I always buy the alphabet stamp and keep them. And this is the current alphabet set. Um, it's got the ones with the accents for um, French and German as well. And um, it comes with a punch. Well, it doesn't. you can get it with a punch or without the punch. It's up to you if you do the bundle. And I thought I bought the bundle with the punch, but I did not. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. So um, it's okay because I just made little banners and I used that same little punch here, the pick a punch, and I just cut myself um, three quarters of an inch strip, long strip, and I would emboss a letter and then cut it. And then I did another one, so I had a one long strip and I made these letters and um, I just glued them onto a piece of baker's twine and went across there and I used that same gold little twine behind there and these brass butterflies are so fun those are in the catalog the annual catalog and you can get them they're a great accent just so you've got a little bit of shine and this was so easy it's all just cutting things out and adding these little pennants onto but these are cute pennants as well nice little shape and so if you buy the Alpha Best stamp set I recommend grabbing the punch as well because it cuts out perfect it's perfectly sized and then you don't have to think about what size. <laughs> and um, I did order it, but it's just not here yet because I thought I ordered it at the same time. Silly me. Anyway, so you can make anything you want here. You can put a name of a child or you can anything you want in there. Super cute, right? And then here's a sneak peek. I made a Christmassy one. Now, I think I want to do the snowman one is what I wanted to do, but I don't have the snowman yet. So I used the gnomes and I want to show you the gnomes. They're so cute. It's called Kindest Gnomes. 
and I thought maybe I would write on the computer gnome sweet gnome I don't know kind of cute right and it's got this mushroom which I love and all these cute little gnomes this one's kind of lifting up his hat so you can see his eyes I really like that one um, super cute and it has a whole collection there are dies I'm going to show it to you because it's so cute. This is a sneak peek. These are not going to be available until next month in July. Unless you're a demonstrator, you can get them now. Or if you join now, you can choose stuff from the holiday catalog now. But otherwise, wait till June. Really cute. So you've got images that cut around the gnomes and the mushroom. But you've also got this one. This is a, a beard. See the beard? And this is feet. This is all it's going to show underneath there. And a hat. <laughs> and you can make your own gnome. Isn't he fun? I love him. And then there's um, mushrooms and some grass. I use the mushrooms right here. They have a little texture already in them and the grass right there. Now this mushroom and this gnome are not stamped. I did not do that great of a job coloring them. Look, there's no lines. That's like um, I, um, no line water coloring or coloring, um, but that's not what I did. This is the paper, and I'm going to show you that. Since I'm showing you this, I might as well show you in that background paper. Look how cute. So the same dies that I showed you that cut out the stamped gnomes also cut out these guys. So I just picked the one in the corner, and I grabbed the die and cut out this guy and so that is a cute and you get two of those so you've got all these little gnomes all their different little braided hair or little beards so cute on the back snowflakes I love this pattern too that's gonna get a lot of use right here's the mountain I used for the background that's that hexagon shape really nice and on the back of that some snowflakes here are some more snowflakes. Like I said, this is the winter catalog. Well, it's like late late summer, early winter, and fall. And I was focusing a lot on fall, but I did grab these gnomes. I love the mushroom paper. And here is that mushroom house. So I cut the one that was right there. This is cute background. This is the back of the mushroom. Super little scenes, real cute. You can use um, a circle punch and cut out the little snow scenes. And I love the little reindeer or moose or whatever that is. I think it's a reindeer. Here are the mushrooms. So I cut out that one. And then here are some cute little animals. These are really sweet. I love the little fox and the bunny. Uh, real cute. I think that's a moose and that's a reindeer, correct? Somebody help me. <laughs> okay, from the back of that, you've got these little trees. Sorry, that's upside down. And then here, just a really busy scene of gnomes. Really cute. You can use that sparingly like a little strip or something real cute little scenes all the different little gnomes in there it's all different <laughs> all different kinds wearing different things really cute here's the background of that that'll also get some use I think that's the last one yeah okay so that is the gnomes so when you get the January catalog or the sorry July to December catalog if you purchased with me in the last year I did send you one um, it's coming out. I don't know if it's left yet. I know demonstrators started getting them, but I don't know if customers did yet. Anyway, it's called Kindest Gnomes, and this one is just Gnomes. Gnomes dies. And so cute. So here are the different ways I used it. Here's that gnome again. Let me pull him off and show you the Friendship is a Thing of Beauty and the Create Frame. And when I get the snowman set, I'm sure I'll make a little pop in for that as well and um, I'll post that on my blog or Facebook page or something like that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about Stampin' Up! these products or becoming a demonstrator, please feel free to uh, contact me. I love to answer all things Stampy. Bye!